Hello, Commanders, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous Journey Across the Galaxy. In the last episode, we finally made it to Sagittarius A-Star. Uh, went and visited the Black Hole, and then came here to Explorer's Anchorage and sold off all of our data, and uh, I was quite surprised to find that I made over a billion credits on that run. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that, that was kind of crazy. But uh, due to the interest that this series has garnered from uh, the viewers... I've decided we're going to go ahead and continue on to Beagle Point. So uh, at the moment, I have a, just a random star over here, kind of towards the upper edge of the, towards toward, kind of towards the upper edge of the, gal the galactic plane there. And then we'll continue on towards Beagle Point all the way over this direction. Uh, let me click on that so you guys can see where that is. Of course, I have to wait for it to zoom in, and then I can zoom out, zoom out. It's too far away for us to route it in a single in a single run, but uh, yeah. So we're going to go from here to here, and then once we get there, we'll continue trying to push our way out towards the edge of the galaxy to make a point over there. I know you can get to stars out over here, but I don't know how many of them are actually reachable. It's already hard enough to kind of get to Beagle Point. We're going to have to do some refining along the way. Our current destination is almost 300 jumps away. So without further ado... I think we're ready to. Uh, I think we're ready to get on with this. Obviously, anytime you are going to leave a station to go off on a extended journey, you feel like you should be checking up on some things. But I mean, it's not like we have anything different that we have to worry about. So let's let's just get out of here. Get ourselves off the space station and start jumping on to the next thing. the The format for this is for the format going out to Beagle Point is going to be exactly the same as everything that we've done so far. It's going to be me yakking while I fly around and try to find biological signatures. Uh, the rules are still the same. The, ex the uh, expectations are still the same. The, like Everything's still the same. Just Now we're just going further into the galaxy. So, that being said, let's make sure we don't hit this guy. It's a little mass lock. There we go. Alright, so, say goodbye to civilization, and uh, away we go into the, the far depths of the galaxy. So the format, or the, the, the repetitious pattern that we use going through all of this is we jump into a system, we hop into the system map, see if anybody has scanned everything there already, and given that we're really close to a very popular destination, I have to imagine the, the first, I don't know, 15 or 20 systems that we hit are probably going to be like that. And then, uh, so... We'll hop in here, we'll pop this system scanner, the, the discovery scanner. We'll hop into the map, see if anybody, oh, wow, okay, nobody, nobody's done anything here. There's only nine bodies. I generally set 15 as my limit to do a, a full-on scan, but either way, we do hop into the scanner to see if there are any uh, ammonia worlds, earth-like worlds, or water worlds, because those are relatively worth scanning. But it, <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you, compared to the exobiology, that was like a drop in the bucket, <laughs> I have to say. I had I had over a billion credits for uh, my exobiology stuff, and then when I sold my planetary scan data, it was it was pennies compared compared. See, if I if I could if I could ha at least have an idea of what the biological feature was going to be, like some of those bio biology biology some of those bacterium are worth a fair bit of money. Not nearly as much as the uh, stratum and all of that, but... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still going to hold to my rule of I want at least two biological signatures in a on, a, on a body before I'm going to waste my time going over to it. But I do need to find that... Uh, I need to find that, that uh, website that had the the information on that so I could decide. I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter. If, I'm never going to be able to determine in advance which um, which planet I'm going to go to based off of what, what might be there, because it doesn't tell you until you go and do a detailed surface scan. And if I go all the way out there to do a detailed surface scan in the first place, then, you know, I might as well land and go get the money for it. So I think we're just going to keep, we're just going to keep the same rules that we had. It made us plenty of money on the way here. I mean, it took us two months to make it this far, but, <laughs> you know, there's no rush, I guess. I, it, I'm hoping, given the attention that you guys are giving to this series, that this will end up being something that is a very long-term kind of thing. That would be really cool. Uh, okay. 
Nothing here that's really worth our time. There's too many bodies for me to want to sit here and scan it, so we're going to keep moving on. I still, even though I made crazy amounts of money on that trip, I still want to maintain a balance between, um, you know, making money along the way and then also actually making progress towards our destination. It took us two months of, you know, daily videos to get from uh, the bubble all the way out here to Sagittarius A star. Beagle Point is even further away. It has, it's, it's an even further dis farther distance than, you know, further distance, farther, further? Farther is distance, further is degrees, but right now it's kind of weird because we're talking about comparisons, which would be comparison of degrees of distance, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's even more of a distance. It's a greater distance um, than the bubble to Sagittarius A star. So, I don't know. So, there's a landable planet there, but it has no atmosphere. Regardless, um, this is a system that has few enough bodies in it that I'm willing to scan them. And then, of course, I press the thing too early. We got here. All right, so that gets rid of all of those. I like it when that. I like it when that happens. And fortunately, none of the bodies appear to be behind the star, so that's good. Uh, I think they are. Okay. Um. Yeah. When it's like this, and you have a hard time finding them, it means that they're the. There's probably a big cluster. Uh, there's probably another star far away, and that's where everything is. So, yeah, I'm not seeing anything. Oh, nope, nope. Well, that's usually what it means, but I guess not in this case. These are only a thousand light seconds away, so that's not bad. Finds and bio. Oh, here we go. Very nice. Okay, so we'll definitely go after that then. And then where is? So there's another. There's another. Well, you know what? I'm not even gonna waste my time. Ooh, that's not what I meant to do. <laughs> Don't do that. The last thing we need is to just drop out and hurt ourselves. All right, so we'll head over to this guy here. No, nope, not that guy. This guy. Get ourselves locked in on the super cruise there and I'll be back when we're almost when we're almost there all right getting really close we're gonna get ourselves into the scanning range and then go find out what really cool object or what really cool bacteria bacteria biological so I hate that the bacteria and biologicals both start with the B I know they don't sound anything alike, but it still it still tricks my brain when I'm sitting here trying to just speak off the cuff about all of this. Anyways. <laughs> I appreciate those of you who have been leaving comments about all the fleet carrier stuff. Uh, you know, with as much money as we made on the trip out here to Sagittarius A-Star, I have to imagine the trip out to Beagle Point and then back to the bubble is probably going to give us enough money uh, where we could feasibly afford one. So I don't know. We'll have to we'll have to wait and find out and see how all that goes. I think it would be really cool if we could do that. Get ourselves a fleet carrier, hop out into the black with it, and basically, you know, maybe never come back to the bubble. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really have any interest in any of the real any of the bubble activities, so it wouldn't really bother me that much to set up my fleet carrier, grab all of my toys pop them in there and then, you know, only come back when there's something really specific that I want. I, could have did, I think I could have just done two probes there. What is it about these small planets that always tend to have crazy amounts of biological diversity? Fungoida. Okay, Osseus and Tussock. So we'll leave Fungoida as our filter there because it seems to be the one that is the most, most, uh, is the rarest, anyways. Let's see. Is there a good place for us to... Well, the problem is, is that when you have these tiny little patches like this, it means they're going to be up in, like, mountains and stuff. 
So that's no, that's that's gonna suck. Orbital flight engaged. Try to head over like this way towards the lighter patches over here, but I don't know. Realistically, the rarer stuff is rare because they're up there in the mountains where it's hard to land. They did it. I think they did that on purpose. <laughs> uh. So fungoida, tussock, and then there was one other thing that was non-bacterial. I don't mind grabbing bacteria if they're easy to if they're easy to spot, but if you've watched my stuff for any length of time, you know that I'm not a fan of running around on the ground and trying to find the stuff, so. And to be very careful as we go down. I mean, I know we're, re we're really close to the station, but I don't want to... Trying to trying to avoid developing those bad habits that cause me to crash. <laughs> The last thing we need is to start flying like an idiot and then end up having to, oop, and then doing this. And end up doing that. And I'm really trying to avoid doing that. So, th is this our fungoid? I would really like the, uh, I would really like the reverse thruster on this thing to be a little stronger. Alright, let's find out what we have here. So we have three different things. We have the fungoida, the tussock, and then there was one other thing I can't remember. Hello. I'm guessing it's the fungoida. It doesn't look like the fonticula. Osseus. Osseus spiralis. Okay. So we have to grab those, we have to grab two more of those, and then I gotta figure out what the, f the fungoida has got to be up in the hills up there. It's gotta be. Ugh. So, yeah, I don't want to ramble on too, too much about the fleet carrier stuff because, you know, at best, that's probably a year away given how these episodes are go, given how these episodes go. Why, why, is the, why are the graphics really just chugging along right now? So... Not what I was trying to do. Let's see. I saw another... I saw another something over here. Are these more of the fung fungoida? I'm pretty sure they are. I'm just going to grab a landing spot where I can find them. Part of me wanted to like just go back to the bubble and grab a Diamondback Explorer because as, as much as I don't, as much as I hate the cockpit in that thing, not having to do this <laughs> would be really nice. Being able to just kind of land almost wherever I want would be would be pretty sweet, but it would take me it would take me forever to to go all the way back to the bubble fit out a Diamondback Explorer, put in the parts, and do all that stuff. It's just like, uh, it's, 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 it's not that. It's, it, it, it doesn't bother me that much to do this. <laughs> okay, all right, so we'll grab this guy right here, and then hopefully we can find one more, and then I guess we gotta go combing through the mountains over there trying to find some fungoida. I don't even know what fungoida looks like. Tussock, I'm pretty sure, is a grass. You got tussock, and then... The, uh, hmm, I don't remember. I don't remember what the other grass type was. Osseus spirellus indigo. I've said it multiple times, and I'm a big fan of the word indigo. I don't really care about the color. Indigo as a color, indigo as a color is not necessarily, like, super appealing to me, but I don't know. The word itself just sounds funny. Indigo. Looks like we got some, uh, some of that tussock over there. Unfortunately, we need one more sample before we're able to clear out our sampler here. So up we go and off to try to find another one. Yeah. 
Hopefully there's something right over in this area. We can grab it real quick. Oh, right over here. I think this is far enough away. Just to be sure, we'll go over to this one here. Since we kind of overshot that one. Alright. Now we go here. I know I could have gotten closer with the ship probably, but when I see blue, I just try to land. There's a lot of times when you try to get right up on these bigger samples, these bigger biological signatures here, they make the ground arbitrarily not landable. <laughs> it's really frustrating. All right, well, so we'll grab this, and like I said, we'll hop up into the mountain. Well, I don't know. Let's. Is there any is there any tussock nearby that we can just go ahead and grab since we're down here? I don't, I don't see any. Oh no, we landed on some. So yeah, let's grab the tussock first because that's going to be easier to find, I think. And as a matter of fact, I need to remember to turn on that night vision because it's going to help us find this stuff. There we go. All right. So tussock, uh, Kultro. Okay. Green. So let's get this night vision turned on. down into this area here. Let's see if we can detect some fields of tussock. Come on. Lots of the stuff we've already found. seeing much. Lots of rocks. I'm trying to stay close to the ground so that the game has a chance to render it before I fly by it, but the problem is is that this little grassy these little grassy signatures are just really hard to see. Grab this one and hopefully one more, and then we'll head back up into the little mountain areas over there. And hopefully, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if there's any point in even trying to do that because uh, this ship is going to be really hard to land up there in those mountains. If we had a if we had a Diamondback Explorer that has a small landing size, then probably that would be reasonable to try to do. But I don't know. We'll head up there. We'll see what the situation looks like, and then we'll make a decision from there. My initial, my, my initial thought is probably not going to happen. Okay. Let's try to do like a helicopter, helicopter uh, flying through here, keeping the nose pointed down and looking at the ground, and hopefully we can find what we're looking for. Requires a lot of vertical thrust. Give me what I want. Okay, maybe down here in this plane we'll be able to find some. See, the problem is, is that they designed this with the intention that you were supposed to get out of your ship and drive around in the SRV to find the stuff. Oh, here we go. See, I had to get all the way down to the ground to see it. That's what I'm talking about. They designed this so that with the intention that you're supposed to get out of your... Okay, with well, the alignment's okay, let me land. They designed the exobiology stuff with the idea that you're supposed to get out of get out in your SRV and drive around forever trying to find individual samples because it takes a lot longer to drive in your SRV to find oh well, there's bacteria there maybe we'll grab that since we're here problem is is that this color is not significantly different enough but since we're here and we're standing on top of one might as well grab it because we're probably not going to be able to get the other sample that we... Oh, I'm outside the window. We're probably not going to be able to grab the other sample that we're... That, the, uh, the fungoid. I, I have a feeling... 
Alcyonium. That's not a very expensive one. If I remember from the list, it was like halfway down, I think. Okay, night vision does not help with the bacteria, so... Um, ideally, though... So, bacteria, from what I understand, likes big flat areas. Let's check this one out. I don't, I don't know that this one's far enough away, but we'll try. Come on. Try to grab this one and one more, and then we'll head up into the mount mountainy areas and see if we can identify the fung the fungoida. Yeah, I guess it would probably help to have to. I have a spreadsheet that I keep in the Call of the Wild to keep track of the. It's like a reference sheet that helps me decide what animals I want to go after, based off of you know what I need and what their potential scores are and things like that. Probably should put together. A, <clears throat> I should probably uh, get a, a sheet that has that information for here so that I can decide how much time and effort I want to put into different things here. Because if I'm only going to get a million credits out of an, out of something that's relatively hard to grab, then it's like, yeah, I'm not going to waste my time on that. But if I'm going to get, you know, 20 or 30 million credits out of something, well, yeah. And then obviously first footfall apparently makes a massive difference in how much money you're going to make. Um, after uh, for scanning something, so that makes a difference as well. All right, I gotta find that sweet spot of being high enough to see far enough, but then not so high that I, it doesn't render the things I need. I think I, yeah, I, just, I barely noticed this one here. All right, so let's grab this. Come on, there we go. Grab this, and then we'll head up into the mountains and see if we can find ourselves some fungoida. Ideally, they'll be easier to spot with the night vision because there won't be a lot of loose rocks and debris and stuff like that, I don't think. But the only way to find out is to go look. Um, I did change... I did go ahead and disband my squadron and rename it because uh, I, I wasn't happy with Gunthrex crew. I don't know why, it just it didn't sit well with me. Uh, mostly because I went in and decide, was trying to decide what I wanted to name all the ranks in it, and I was like, well, I want military-style ranks, and Gunthrex crew doesn't really sound good when you have a colonel as the as the leader, so... <laughs> I decided to, I decided to change it, uh, and I called it the... Uh, I decided to call it the Semper Stellar Corps. Is this our... F no, it's a rock. Uh, mostly as a nod to my time in the Marine Corps. Okay, so we got a bunch of, like, rocks and stuff trying to see if there's anything that looks weird in here. But I mean, even if we find anything, I seriously doubt we're going to be able to land in here. And I don't even know what the fungoida looks like. I should probably have a reference chart for that, too. What do they all look like? So yeah, that's just a rock. What's that? It's just a rock. Oh, oh. Oops. Sometimes a ship just doesn't respond the way I expect it to. So I don't know if it's in the mountains or if it was just near the mountains. Maybe it's in the foothills. <clears throat> the night vision is definitely not helping. I was expecting there not to be a lot of rocks and stuff. I don't see anything that looks like it would be... Yeah, it's all just little rocks and stuff. Oh, here it is. Problem is, is, I'm not going to be able to land here. Yeah, that's the problem. So this is our fungoida, I'm pretty sure, but I have no way to get to it. Yes, there's a spot around here I can actually land. I don't think that they're going to let me. This is where a small ship would be nice. Yeah. 
or you know just let me let me repel repel from the ship and then have it hover there while I do stuff that doesn't seem unreasonable to me I'm not I'm not I'm not I don't I don't care how much it's worth I'm not gonna go fly miles and miles away and then try to climb my way up here in a freaking SRV that's ridiculous so there's no landing spots around in here there's nowhere for me to land here. Oh, nope. Oh, I saw blue. I saw blue. Let's see, look how much time we're having to spend doing this, though. Like, see what I mean? This is this is where it becomes not worth the time it takes to do this. Because, look how, look, we're having to manually search around for a... Isn't there, like, an auto land option somewhere? Oh, but I don't have the I don't have the automatic landing thing anyway. So, yeah, I think we're just gonna go ahead and and ignore this because anything that's up here in the mountains like this. I mean, look how much time we've already spent all this time trying to find a landing area for this one sample, and every sample is going to be like this. And I'm curious to know. Uh, let me see. Can I find that? Let me, let me look at my history and see if I can find that um, that page I found that had the information in it. Um, it was exobiology. So where was the I had a pri I found a price list somewhere. I don't see the list though. So exobiology price list. I think that's what I searched for last time. I just don't remember where I found. I found a list that had all of the different cost of everything. But I don't remember where I found it. Hmm. Where's that list? I don't remember where I found that list. Maybe it was the maybe it was AI. Yeah, you see what I'm saying here, though. It's like, even if it's worth a hundred million credits, it's like I, I don't, I don't want to do it. <laughs> I don't want to do it. This is ridiculous. There's no way for me to land here, and. The best, the only other way I could do it would be to head over here, all the way over here. Or, like, I could, I might be able to find, no, yeah, there's nowhere to land here. I'd have to go all the way down over here. Find an area to land that's actually flat enough for this ship to land. And then drive all the way up into the mountains there. And while I understand that, you know rarer stuff should be more difficult to get to. At the same time, my, my, my counter argument to that is, I'm in a spaceship, dude. I should be able to have it just hover here, drop down a rope or something, descend down, get my sample, dis, uh, ascend back up, and then get back in my ship. Like, I, I hate the argument that the developers have, have that we want to make it we want to make it difficult, even at the expense of what's reasonable. It's like, ugh, whatever. Right, I'm not going to get into a fight about that. Anyways, um, hopefully you guys had lots of fun. Be sure to click... Oh, blah. Okay, never mind. Uh, be sure to click that like button if you did so that the YouTube algorithm knows. And we'll send the video out to more viewers. If you're not subscribed, be sure to do that now so that when the next video comes out, you will be able to watch it as soon as it becomes available because it will show up in your video feed. And channel members do get early access to all of my videos in addition to several other perks depending on what tier you choose. So be sure to click that join button and decide if any of those are right for you. Again, thank you very much for your time. Hope to see you for the next one. And have a great day, guys.